Hello everyone, welcome back to Fanblade. Well, it is that time of year again, Christmas is done, finally, summer can finally begin. So, we're starting a new project, it's going to be a project the likes of which I've never tackled before. And I've done some pretty crazy things on this channel, but one of the things I've never done is a normal bass. Just four strings, some good quality wood, some good quality hardware, and all the craftsmanship that I've got to throw at it. Just the best bass that I can make, and something that could potentially be sold to another human being for them to actually use in the real world, you know, that would be a great thing to do. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Now unfortunately I had a bit of trouble buying hardware. I went to the website where I normally buy all my stuff, that's Real Tone Music, and they are closed early for Christmas from the 1st of December till the 8th of January. That's alright, we still have options. There's a place called Guitar Trade, and I've bought a couple of things from them before, so I went there and I looked for the bridge that I like, and it's sold out. Uh, okay, I can build my own bridges. That's fine, that would, that would add an interesting aspect to the, uh, to the project. Uh, what about tuners? And sold out. So I'm a little bit stuffed. This abomination is going to be our new donor. Uh, you may remember this from a uh, month or two back when uh, I had to do extensive work to the neck to make that play. Uh, I had to build uh, some pickups for them because the original ones were terrible. Over the course of that I discovered that the entire thing is just a load of rubbish. <laughs> uh, however, the bridge is okay. The bridge is fine. The tuners are nice. These is, this is hardware I can use. I have a truss rod. I have quite a lot of fret wire over there somewhere. We have a bass guitar. Oh, and these strings, nearly new. I did actually take this out and play it at a gig. Like, it's okay, but it's not really. The neck's quite a lot chunkier than I like, and it has a, 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 a proven history of wanting to twist. So, yeah, this thing is going to get stripped for parts, and then I'm going to build a better bass. And I'm building it out of... Ash for a top. I've got a lovely piece of uh, figured ash. I'll show you that up close later. Uh, that's 20 mil, I think. 20 mil. Yep. Um, so I need sort of 20 or 25 mil for a uh, backing to glue it onto. And I've got quite a lot of uh, very tight grain spruce, which is all recycled doors and whatnot, uh, or door frames. Door frames, I should say. Uh, this one in particular. <laughs> It's got some very, very tight, tight grain on there. So uh, even though this is a softer wood, the tightness of the grain means that it's going to be a bit harder, a bit denser. It's probably going to be a fairly nice balance. The thing I've got to be careful with this piece, though, is that it is so old that there's a chance that this is lead-based paint. So uh, when I'm stripping that off, what I will be doing will be... Uh, essentially running it over the planer with a mask, with gloves and everything on. In fact, I should wash my hands immediately. But then immediately bagging up the sawdust and trying to keep uh, any contamination contained. Because I used to work in an electronics factory. I actually had elevated lead levels which were in danger of giving me officially lead poisoning. Um, it's okay, I'm fine now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm going to have to resaw this because this is thick enough. I can basically book match this, open that up, and that'll be the, uh, with a slab of that in the middle, that'll be the thickness with which I can glue this to. Did it make any sense? Probably not. You'll see me go as I go. Um, right now, I'm going to strip a terrible base for parts and then uh, very carefully get to preparing a body blank.
Now that we've got that cleaned up, we can see what we're actually dealing with grain-wise. The, the rings of this tree are sort of going around in uh, that, uh, that fashion there. So we're getting some nice tight sort of almost quarter-sawn uh, grain going there, and then it starts to spread out along this edge. This piece is basically quarter-sawn. We've got uh, a lot of very straight tight grain along there, and then if I turn that sideways, it's all spread out again. I'm going to book match this side so that on the other side of course it'll start with more spread out grain and then get tighter and tighter as it goes across. That's going to look quite good. But there's a problem. This edge, I didn't realize, has these two great big inserts in it and, and uh, just a couple of nails as well which I didn't know were there when I ran it over the jointer. I'm glad I didn't sharpen those blades yet because that would have annoyed me. I don't know how deep these go. When I split this in half to book match it, I'm going to find out how deep they go. And that's kind of going to be interesting to see whether or not, whether or not the template is actually going to miss those. Probably not going to miss them on each side. I can shift it down a bit because they're there and there. I can just, I can just squeeze that in. So that, that one misses there and then I, I don't know how deep this one goes. I'm going to have to cut it open and find out. I was going to cut it open anyway, so yeah, let's cut it open. This is what we got. This is good. This is 22 and a half millimeters thick. Uh, and of course we've got a top that's going to go on the other side of this. You are looking at the surface that's going to be visible. Uh, this is the back of the template. And when I drop that on there and line up the center line, you can see that I've easily got enough space to clear all of these things. As, as soon as I saw how deep these went, I knew I was going to need a second slice in the center. Uh, that's fine, we still get that effect where the grain's nice and tight and then it spreads out in the middle and then gets tight again at the other side. Um, unfortunately, we do have this knot hole here. That's not necessarily ideal. What I'm going to do is actually spin that around and there's just enough space between this point here and this point here that I can uh, miss all of, the, uh, all of the cutouts and we do have now two knot holes. That might be a bad thing if you don't like knot holes, but uh, Louis Armstrong once said that if you play a wrong note, play it again, and then people will think you meant to do it the first time. So that's the rationale I'm using there. <laughs> Plus we get this, this, this lovely sort of, sort of wavy bit of grain book matched in there, and, and, like, and it's only the back. Uh, the top is a whole other story. Let's have a look at that. This is a plank of ash that used to be a uh, piece of a bookshelf. Um, it has got some lovely grain just absolutely stunning figuring going through there. Uh, it's also got a few nail holes and uh, yeah, that bit, I believe, if we look at the top of the template, uh, if I line this up just right, 
then what I can do is actually get a situation where the whole top is basically one piece. That's going to be a cutout for a pickup, and then I can just take a little corner of this and just glue it on the edge here, um, because where the grain actually goes across there, there's a little line there, and there's no lines there, and I should be able to just match a little block on there. So, uh, all up, this is probably going to look like uh, quite a stunning instrument. I mean, I mean, just all the all the grain through here. Look at all of that. <laughs> this is this is going to be quite a remarkable thing. Uh, all I've got to do is build it properly. So, to that end, I'm going to uh, clean up some of these edges because uh, they're a little bit rough um, and glue that together. I'm going to mark out exactly where the alignments and everything are going to go because I should probably yeah I'll try and I'll try something like that um, and then uh, yes work out how I'm going to uh, stick it all together also this piece of wood is not perfectly flat it sort of starts to curve up a little bit on this side but uh, I'm not using that bit I'm using uh, mostly up up here so this bit over here isn't quite flat so yeah uh, we'll, I'll figure it out as I go and I'll finesse everything uh, to be uh, nice and flat and get some nice tight glue joins and so that the thing doesn't fall apart because that's bad That is the back of the body glued up, and it's just started raining. Don't know if you can hear that. It's summer in New Zealand. We can thank climate change for that. Um, I need to get uh, uh, the design sort of figured out while this glue dries. I need to actually draw the thing out, just so I know how long the neck needs to be, and whether or not I can use one of my pre-existing neck blanks, or whether or not I need to cut another one off the main block. My roll of paper's run out. That's alright. Uh, all I really need to do is draw the space between the nut and the bridge because uh, I know what the body shape's going to be, I don't have to design that. I know what my headstock's going to be, I've got templates for that, but I've never put a four string neck on this body, so I need to work out how long it's going to have to be, where the join's going to be, how wide it's going to be at that point, uh, and then I can figure out how wide my neck plank needs to be. Uh, everything else is pretty much taken care of at this stage. Even though I can't draw the entire instrument, I can still plot out the measurements that I need to get uh, and uh, know what I'm doing for once. <laughs>
couple of things. So, first of all, this block is uh, big enough. It's got plenty of length to do the job. Uh, it's got plenty of uh, width and depth, except not all of those dimensions are going in the right direction. Um, we, I have used this block for several necks, and it also wound up being used as a double base fingerboard at one point, and that's how this angle got cut on this side. So, uh, yes, that line doesn't necessarily follow the direction that the grain is going, it all gets a little bit thin up that end, so that's not great. What I'm going to have to do is effectively, because th this I think was originally going to be a bar leaner, or a bar edge or something, um, I'm going to have to cut this rounded bit off, and that's going to be my uh, flat square reference edge for marking out the rest of the neck parallel to the direction of the grain, and uh, yeah, and then this weirdness over here, that'll just get cut away when I carve the rest of the neck. Uh, yes, I'm going to slice it that way, I'm going to split it down there so I can get two blanks out of this block, and uh, that's a good way to not waste wood. Also, just quickly, uh, I'm really glad that I did actually draw this out. Um, I kind of actually have to draw the rest of the headstock out because I found my headstock templates, and neither one of them has any of the holes marked out. So, uh, going to draw all that up now, and then I'll uh, then I'll carve this thing up. Alright, scarf joint cut, uh, it's looking alright, it's looking pretty good, everything lines up nicely, except there's a problem with it all lining up nicely. Because we've got essentially a square edge and a non-square edge, and I'm flipping one onto the other, if I want to line those up with the grain running... The, the transfer between the grains going straight across, then it's going to wind up looking something like that. Uh, there's a bit sticking out there, and of course that's undercut underneath there. That's not a problem, because uh, where the nut is, the nut is only going to be 40 mil. I've got uh, a full 62 there, so 11 millimeters on either side uh, can get, just get cut away. Uh, so this is going to look a bit weird, but it's the better option. I did think about just gluing it on sort of straight, <laughs> uh, but the th trouble is the transfer and the grain lines, there's a bit of an angle there, and uh, I know all about what happens when grain doesn't line up perfectly straight. You wind up with a bent neck, and that's, um, uh, that is also not very good. Looks like a bit of a hideous amateur mess, but 
this edge here is parallel to the center line there. Uh, and uh, that's all it needs to be right now. We'll tidy up the rest of it when the glue is dried, which uh, will be tomorrow. In fact, that's pretty much me done for the day. Uh, yeah, see you in a bit. And it is the dawning of a new day. It is time to get all of these clamps off and see what I'm actually dealing with. Although I kind of know what I'm dealing with. I just want to see what state it's in. Well, surprise, surprise, it's not perfectly flat. <laughs> uh, I'll need to uh, uh, flatten this off, that's particularly rough, and of course this might just have a tiny little bit of curve in it. But uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know what I was expecting, it's the wood that I glued together yesterday, so yeah. <laughs> So after quite a bit of time with a block plane and some sandpaper, they are now two very flat surfaces. I'm not going to claim them to be perfectly flat, I'm just doing it by hand. There's, there's no movement there. <laughs> it's, it's as flat as it's going to get done by hand. I would love to get a drum sander. Um, I don't know where I would put one. Uh, I will have to have a think about that. Maybe next Christmas. I've retraced the template onto this one, marked out the center lines so that I can uh, mark out the center lines on there. Um, yeah, I think we're ready to glue. Where are my clamps? That is an enormously satisfying sight, uh, and a very heavy one. We've got to end the video at some point, so it may as well be here. Uh, I will uh, set this aside and uh, get to it tomorrow. In the meantime, I'll start filming part two right now, where I'm going to look at the neck, get a truss rod and a fingerboard in that, 
Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll release all of these sort of as as I go. And uh, yeah, you, I've got a week and a half to do it. So come along for the ride, because because uh, it's already been a bit of a wild one. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I will see you in a day or so.